Hi, Untold Miracles listeners. You are in for an amazing episode today with the one and only Zachary Levi, who recently starred in the box office hit movie Shazam. He's deep. He's profound. He's authentic. You are in for some amazing wisdom. I love how sometimes the worst things that happen to us in life set us up for success. We just have to trust the process. I really appreciate his time. I learned so much. If you like this episode, I would love for you to share with your friends and family. Go subscribe on iTunes. Leave us a review. Grateful for your support of the Untold Miracles community. Have an amazing day. Kelly Davis, your host of the Untold Miracles podcast, and today I'm so excited for our special guest. He's an actor, director, singer, philanthropist, Tony Award nominee, and most recently starred as Billy Batson in the superhero box office hit movie Shazam. What I really admire most about Zach is that he lives his life in gratitude and strives to be a conduit for light and love. He truly makes the world a better place, and I'm so excited for our conversation today. Mr. Zachary Levi, welcome to the podcast. That is one of the nicest introductions I've ever had. Thank you so much. (laughs) Well, hey, I listened to your amazing podcast with Jay Shetty, and your energy just blew me away. Oh, yeah. And I am so excited that I get to talk to you today, so thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, and I'm really glad you were able to to catch that podcast with Jay. Yeah, that was a really... So good. ...really cool, powerful moment. (laughs) And, you know, I keep getting really lovely messages from people on line just how they keep finding it and how it it's helping them and it just like overwhelms me i just get so i like the gratitude you know like you're talking about i I just i get overwhelmed on a regular basis nowadays that uh, i I just am so grateful to be used uh like even i didn't know that doing that podcast was really going to be helping anybody necessarily i just can't stop talking about mental health. So it's just, it's just every single time I do a podcast, it's a way for me to blow off my own theme. Zach, before we start, I want to thank you so much for your support of Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. You recently visited Secret Studios at Boston Children's Hospital yeah. and earlier this year at Children's Hospital of Orange County. And I saw some of those photos and the smiles on those kids' faces were so big. Tell me about why it was important to you to spend time with those incredible patients and their families. Well, I mean, to be perfectly honest, uh, you know, and you hear this a lot about nonprofit uh, or philanthropic work, but it's really, when you figure it out, like, you know, the secret is that you're, it's actually, it's serving you almost more than you're <laughs> serving them. You, we don't realize how much I think our souls are, are thirsty. We, we, we know when our, when our body needs refreshment, we know when our hearts and minds need refreshment for the most part. Um, but I don't think that we often realize just how thirsty our souls are for that refreshment. And when you go, that's why when you go and, you know, volunteer at a soup kitchen or you go and I don't know, help out, literally help a friend move. Sometimes if you're not, if you're not ornery about it, you realize that you're, you're as a servant, you are alleviating something for someone else. You are bringing joy to them. You are bringing light to them. There is no group of people in this world that is more deserving of that light than children and particularly children who are going through some really gnarly stuff in their lives and, and are their families. And I'm a big believer in um, what people have known from Spider-Man for some time, but with great power comes great responsibility. And I love that, but I don't, I don't, you know, responsibility I think has become a, a really negative term. I don't see responsibility as negative. I I quite welcome the responsibility that God's given me in my life. And I love the fact that I have been given a platform to go love on people so (laughs) immensely, so so intensely. And like the fact that I get to be an actor who plays a superhero that is also a kid that therefore kids relate to so much (laughs) and find so much joy from and I can just go make an appearance at a hospital and go make their days infinitely better. I mean, not even just their day, but that stuff can carry over for a week, for a month, for a year. You never know the impact that you make on somebody's life, positively or negatively. That's why it's so important to always be, I think, very conscientious of that. And give as much as you can without, of course, which is what a lot of people do. They unhealthily give too much of themselves and then they're drained and then they are not in a healthy place themselves. But I think we should always be giving as much as we possibly can within healthy reason. I love that. And I love healthy boundaries. And sometimes we do have to say no, but those times when we can say yes and make an impact in the life of someone is we need to take advantage of this. Well, on this podcast, we talk about miracles and your career in Hollywood has been quite miraculous. 
You've been in the business for 20 years. You started acting at six. I want to know what your dreams were as a child. Did you ever visualize yourself on the big screen as a superhero wearing a red costume with a lightning bolt? Yeah. I mean, didn't we all? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't know that I envisioned the specifics of being in a red, a red uh, super suit with, uh, with the Thunderbolt. But, um, I mean, ever since I was a kid, I think ever since any of us are, you know, anywhere between, I don't know, three and seven or those really incredible years where you fully believe that the floor is lava and you're jumping from couch to couch. Those years, you really do believe anything is possible in your life, including being a superhero. Mm -hmm. Um, But certainly when I was about four, I think was the first time I was cognizant of the idea that I could intentionally make somebody laugh. And uh, it was like magic. It was like, that was like finding my, my first superpower. Like I could do this thing and it made that person feel better. And it made me feel better. And so I became an immediately addicted to that drug and I could not stop. And I haven't <laughs> stopped. I just, I love, I love making people laugh. I, I later figured out that what that was, was some form of entertainment, which and then acting and probably around eight, I was like, Oh, this is a job. I could do that. Yeah. I want to do that. I want to, I want to be an actor when I grow up, but I still didn't know what the heck that really meant. And then I found theater and was doing theater um, and learned about drama and learned that, you know, you can touch someone not even just through humor, but also through talking about deeper issues and, and, you know, bringing someone to awareness and awakening and certain things. That's some of the best movies or dramatic movies we've ever seen are those that are catharsis. They, they are allowing us to mourn something or see something and stand with it or whatever. So my whole uh, life, really, I've, I've wanted to be an actor, and you're not wrong. It's the whole thing's a miracle. I mean, the <laughs> fact that but I, it is. I mean, it's, it, to, to be a working actor in Hollywood is uh, statistically impossible. I mean, it, it, it's you know, it's like landing a, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like landing a rover on the on Mars. Like, it's it's not a typical thing, and I count my blessings regularly, and think the whole darn thing is one beautiful miracle. I would really love for you to share the life lesson that you learned after you were killed off in Thor. And I think you learned a lot about trusting the universe going through that process to now. Can you kind of share that story? Because that that's really been helpful for me. Sure. Um, and I think most people that listen, because a lot of times we want to control our future instead of just yeah. having faith in the process. So I just, I, I, this story is so cool. So I would love for you to share this. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I was super grateful that I got to be uh, in the Thor franchise, played a really fun role with Sandal the Dashing, but we we weren't really utilized all that much in that franchise. And then ultimately were kind of quickly and unceremoniously killed off in the third one. And in the moment I was kind of salty. I was a little, I I was, I was not in a great place in my life. Um, I didn't realize just how unhappy and unhealthy I was. Um, but you know, it's, it's easy to not know how unhealthy and unhappy you are when you can look at the things happening around you as the reasons why you can, they're almost, you know, it's not you that needs to work on you. It's all those other things need to work better for you. So I, yeah, so that happened. And then uh, I moved out to Texas and then went through some just really gnarly darkness. Uh, I think it was basically my 37 years of life catching up to me at that moment and all of the, the traumas and and abuses that I was unaware of that have happened to me, that had happened to me that I didn't get healing enough from. And it brought me to my knees in every possible way. And fortunately I had family and friends that surrounded me and loved me and uh, found uh, this incredible uh, organization that does like, you know, just super intensive kind of uh, sleep away therapy kind of stuff. And it saved my life. I I was uh, an active part of saving my own life as well as uh, again, all of the people God brought into my life. And, and I came out of that basically right on the heels of finishing my treatment and getting kind of finding the light again, I was uh, provided an audition. Well, actually just to go back really quick, two months prior to this, I had been given an audition slip uh, to audition for the role of Shazam and Shazam. And I knew that the rock had already been cast as what, uh, as black Adam, who was essentially the twin, the, the, just the, the evil twin of the, the character of Shazam. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really look in the mirror and see myself <laughs> as the twin of the rock. So I turned it down. Uh, I, I turned down the audition cause I thought I would be wasting everybody's time. Now cut to two months later, I've gone through three weeks of intensive therapy. I've saved my life. I am now feeling 
that light and levity return to my body and my my heart and my mind and my soul. And I get this random email from my agency saying, hey, we know you're on a retreat right now, but there's another uh, role, a supporting role in the movie Shazam. Would you take a look at this and let us know if you want to put yourself on tape for it? No pressure, just, you know, it's there. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm feeling better. I think I'm, why not? I'm going to put myself on tape for this. I sent it in and that was on a Friday night. And uh, that Friday night, uh, everyone in charge of the movie, the producers, the studio, the writer, director, everybody had seen my tape. And uh, they called my agency back and they said, hey, uh, he's great for this role, but um, we think he might actually be our Shazam. We haven't cast that role yet. Mm. And uh, then through a series of just incredible um, miraculous. You know, timing and events, <laughs> miraculous, <laughs> miraculous, I went from, I went from uh, being not Shazam and auditioning for uh, a supporting role in Shazam to being Shazam within uh, one week from Friday to Friday. And that was on the heels of going and doing this life changing life saving uh, therapy. That gives me goosebumps. Kind of going from, from, from suicide to superhero. And that happened in, in miraculous uh, timing. And I, I can't give the credit to anything other than a miracle to anything other than God or, you know, the universe is the terminology uh, out that, that people use. Mm -hmm. It is completely outside of me. It is completely has everything to do with doing what is the most important work, which is on yourself and finding uh, self love. That was the biggest part of my journey and the linchpin of it is learning to actually love myself, which I didn't realize I hadn't been doing my entire life. That was keeping me from so many great things. Uh, and it's something that I continue to work on daily. It's something that, you know, it's not just change and then that's it. You know, you got to just in the same way that you wake up every morning and you brush your teeth and you eat a healthy breakfast and you go get a workout. You know, you got to take care of your body. You got to take care of your heart and mind. The more you love yourself and care for yourself in this incredible, miraculous vessel that we've been given, that we're even here right now, that we're even alive, there is nowhere in the entire universe. Now, granted, we're, you know, we're, <laughs> we're human beings. We don't know that much, but we've been looking for a really long time. We've been looking everywhere and we're going to continue to look everywhere. And up to this point, we have still not found life anywhere else in this massive, massive, vast universe. We're a miracle. Just the fact that you are alive <laughs> means that you're a miracle. Right. So I can't stop preaching that till I die. <laughs> well, we treat 10 million kids each year at our 170 hospitals. And I like to say that literally I just witnessed living, breathing, walking, talking miracles. Kids that walk when doctors said they wouldn't see when sight wasn't possible, live when doctors said they would die. Yeah. And I think that truly just recognizing our health every day, it helps me so much. But you had mentioned your theme for this year is patience. And... What have you experienced this year that has helped you develop more patience? Ooh, um, well, gratitude. I do, I, I gratitude is just, it's just it's such an incredible uh, balm for the soul, for everything. It's, uh, um, but when you're grateful, you're not rushing because you're, mm. you're okay with where you are. Mm. And that's been a really, because I didn't love myself, I was constantly trying to do the next thing that could make me feel better about myself, a new job, uh, finding love elsewhere, what, what, whatever you are doing, you're not happy with you where you are. So the more you can be happy with who you are and where you are, which requires self-love and gratitude and patience, you know, and then that forces you to be patient with yourself, mm. which then helps you to be patient with the rest of uh, the world and, the, and other people and where your journey is. So you've had some amazing moments in your career, Zach. You've performed on Broadway. You've performed at the 83 Academy Awards. You had your own TV series named after you. Is there a moment that you are most proud of in your career to date? Oh, man. Um, and I also want to mention that you've raised a lot of money for charity. You've raised over a million dollars for Operation Smile. You have Nerd Machine and Nerd HQ that you're going to turn into a nonprofit. I mean, I guess from a creative standpoint, I'm pretty proud of Shazam. I'm pretty proud of Chuck and Tangled and mm -hmm. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been able to be a part of so many incredible projects. And I feel proud of my work in all of those. But I, I really think God created me and he creates all of us in very specific and amazing ways. And, you know, um, and I think that one of our, one of the uh, difficult things for a lot of us is, is finding what we were created for. We're always kind of trying to figure that out. Like, what, what is my, what's the point? What am mm -hmm. I doing? And I think that from an early age, like I said, at four, I, I couldn't get enough of making people happy. And part of that was unhealthy, um, 
validation that I needed. But a lot of that was also because God just always gave me a heart for people. Mm -hmm. And I love people. And I love love. (laughs) And I love feeling joy and bringing joy. And so what I'm most proud of are all of the ways in which I have been able to have an impact in someone's life that has helped them feel better and ultimately do better. That that's what I want to be remembered for more, more than anything. I love that. Well, I know we're running out of time, but I do have a special video for you and I hope that you can hear it. And it's from a little girl who's one of the youngest kids to ever receive a heart and lung transplant. And oh, wow. her t-shirt says, love always wins. But she has a little message for you and a song for you, which happens to be about love, ironically. And so I'm going to play that for you right now. Okay, it's just a short little video. It's 30 seconds. Yes, I'd love to. Hey, there. This is Isabella. I wanted to sing a quick song for you. I, I, I believe you and me, sisters and brothers and I. So her message for you is that love wins, and I can't wait for you to see her adorable little face. But the last question that I ask to all of my guests is, if there were three miracles that you could create in the world today, what would that look like for you? Only one, which is I think that everyone in this world would be healed in their hearts and in their minds. Mm. Because I think that if we can do that, then all of the... (laughs) Like literally all of the bad things will go away. I think that every problem that we have in this world, if you really trace it back to its origin, it is rooted in a broken person who was not loved fully or wholly or appropriately, was not was not reared or brought up to understand themselves and love themselves and love others the way that they ought to. And uh, if we can go and love those people back to life, get their heads and their hearts right, then I think I wouldn't even need to use another miracle. We can all be us. Well, Zach, I know people listening on this podcast, I know that there's several that are probably struggling with self-love. It's definitely something that's been a part of my journey for 20 years, and it's been very challenging, but I've been able to do the work, and you know, there's tools I practice on a daily basis to help with my self-love. What would you say to someone who's really struggling right now? What's something that they can do to help them love themselves? I'm a really, really, really big fan of and proponent of therapy. I think that um, if you can, it's the most valuable investment you can make into your life. It's worthy of, of pinching your pennies, skip a vacation one year, save all that money and put it in toward uh, getting a professional therapist to spend time with them and, and work through the things that, that are going on in your heart and mind people don't realize just how important it is to have a third party uh, because no matter who you are, you are surrounded by people who love you, um, but they are biased. They don't, they're not able to look through their own proximity bias toward you and how they've known you growing up and all of the things they're not able to disconnect or disassociate enough to give you the very unbiased, very clear and kind Uh, messaging that you need to hear in order for you to understand who you are, where you've been, and what is reality and how we fit into reality. So I think therapy uh, is the most important thing. And if you don't have the resources for it, if you go online, there there are organizations and even government assistance in trying to get some kind of mental health. Beyond that, to wake up in the morning and to look at yourself in the eyes and to say that you are loved and you are loved you are worthy of love and reminding yourself that it's okay that you're not perfect. It's okay that you struggle or even have failed in areas of your life does not make you a failure. It just makes you a human being. I love it. And thank you so much today, Zach, for your time. I I'm just so grateful for you. I'm grateful for 
the energy and vibe that you put into the world for the miracles that you create. I watched Shazam on a flight home from LA two days ago. It's an amazing movie if you haven't seen it. It's hilarious, it's a good message, um, it's awesome. But where can people follow you, Zach? At Zachary Levi is basically uh, across all, all the handles, all the social media handles. Uh, Instagram and Twitter are pretty much the only ones that I use, although I think I'm gonna start a YouTube channel soon uh, just because uh, there's a lot of fun things going on in my life right now, and I want to share them with everybody. Thank you for all you do for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, and we look forward to more opportunities to work together, and, and thanks again for your time. Thank you, darling. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I got a good feeling. My head is reeling. Hello, today it's all good. All good. Hi, I'm Kristen Bell. When my kids fall down or get tummy aches, I treat them with hugs, kisses, and colorful band-aids. But when kids are really sick, I'm so grateful for Children's Miracle Network Hospitals with care designed for kids. But as great as Children's Hospitals are, they need our help to ensure every kid has the chance to get better. Please join me in supporting Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Put your money where the miracles are. Give to your Children's Miracle Network Hospital.